What's up dudes? I've literally never made a video like this before and honestly I probably should have done a long time ago. I've literally never told my entire story from start to finish in one video. It's been mixed around in my videos a lot before and for those of you that have been listening to the podcast or have been around the channel for a long time probably definitely know this but um, for those of you that are new here or people that have stumbled upon this channel Welcome, glad you're here, and just want to kind of catch you up on uh, my story. It's a crazy one. Uh, this is so strange. So normally there's a guy behind the camera named Andrew, but today I wanted to get a little personal, a little one-on-one -on -one with you. Just kind of talk about um, how I got injured. So it was a, a Monday, and um, it was Martin Luther King Day. It was a holiday, and um, I decided to go out for a run. The, the night before, I was out with uh, some friends and um, decided I wanted to go work out at the gym the next day. Uh, the next day was Martin Luther King Day, and unbeknownst to me, I uh, didn't know the gyms were closed. So when I showed up to the gym, I ended up calling my buddy and saying, hey man, don't worry about working out today. Um, we're just going to, um, or I'm just gonna go for a run instead. So I decided uh, to do exactly that. Um, at the time, I was going to SCAD Atlanta, and I was in the SCAD Atlanta parking deck, and um, decided to venture out onto Peachtree Road and um, just kind of explore the city, just run around downtown, just kind of see what was going on. And you know, it was a warm day. It was a really nice, beautiful, warm January day, which really got me excited because it was the middle of January, and January sucks around here. So here, here in Atlanta, we've got um, underground parking decks. And uh, the reason we have uh, underground parking decks is because uh, when you park your car in those parking decks, you um, want to have the ability to let out all the carbon dioxide and so that the cars and the drivers inside of the cars uh, don't suffocate. So um, when I was running, I was running, 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 and one of those, those grades was open and I definitely didn't see it and fell into one of those holes and fell about 50 feet. That's right, 50 feet. Um, luckily, um, at the time, I kinda had an idea of airspace. Um, a few years earlier, when I lived in Kansas, a buddy of mine um, had a, a gymnastics gym that we used to go do tricks at, basically. We would do like, you know, flips and, you know, tumbles and rolls and, you know, I, I diving into foam pits and whatever we possibly could do. And all you gymnast people out there know exactly what I'm talking about. And I decided to, um, not decided, I just instinctually, man, like you're falling. You don't even know what's going on. Like, I didn't even realize how big of a fall it was, but I knew that I wanted to land on my feet because that's what you do when you fall. I wanted to, to land on my feet and just roll out of it um, like I'd learned how to do uh, in gymnastics. And uh, I just kind of like just, just started like just balancing myself in air and um, successfully managed to land on my feet. Uh, but after that, I completely blacked out, just gone. Um, and I didn't, I, on the way down when I was falling, I didn't even realize that it was going to be a catastrophic injury. I didn't even think I was going to hit a hurt. All I thought was that, you know, it was going to sting a little bit. You know, like when you're a kid, you know when, you, when you're like you're running down the stairs and you jump from like the third stair and you land and you're like, ha I'm cool, I made it down the, down the stairs faster than I did before. You know, one time you're in a hurry, you get a little bit ambitious or you're excited and you run and you jump and you jump from the fifth step instead of the third step and just bam, your feet hurt and they really sting and you're like, oh, oh damn it, oh, that, that sucks, I'm, I'm never gonna do that again. That's literally all I thought that was gonna happen. I, I just thought my feet were gonna sting. Um, and uh, that was not the case. Um, luckily, at the time, um, I was, um, you know, training to be a, a competition bodybuilder. So I was doing things like uh, leg presses and squats uh, multiple times a week. And so that allowed my, my legs to be really, really, really stinking strong. And I also knew exactly like the foot positioning. Like if you've ever put your feet up on a, like a leg press plate or if you've done squats before, you know that like your foot positioning is very important and, and kind of like instinctually, automatically, you can just kind of get it. You just know like, oh, that's how I need to put my feet. So um, managed to land on my feet and um, immediately broke both my legs. Uh, the tibia, which is right above the ankle, and it's the bigger bone um, of the two that run in between your knee and your ankle, the shin bone, both broke at the exact same place. 
Um, one of the nurses remarked later that she must think I'm, I'm part monkey because she's literally never seen anyone have two identical fractures, um, which means I landed on both my feet at the exact same time in the exact same way. And if I wouldn't have done that, my injuries would have been far worse. If I would have landed on uh, just one leg, um, that would have shoved uh, the femur, which is the part in between the hip and the knee, uh, up inside of my body and into my organs and just completely killed me right there. Um, so the ability, the fact that I just landed on my two feet um, was awesome. Um, since I was kind of in the, the squat stance position, um, my my body just kind of did exactly what you'd expect as a squat. My butt went straight to the ground, um, but because my legs broke, my, my butt hit the ground and the tailbone um, and, and a force of impact just shot up my spine and uh, blew out the vertebrae uh, in my spine, uh, the impact that shot through it. It's very similar to if you've ever taken a long pole before and you've hit the long pole on the ground, it goes whoing. That same idea where my tailbone hit the ground and it shot the force of impact all the way up my spine, blowing out multiple vertebrae along the way. And um, the, the vertebrae that um, blew up, well, they called it a burst fracture, but let's be honest, I saw the x-rays, it looked like it blew up, um, was at the L2, um, which is um, right in the lumbar, second lumbar, right about at the belly button. And um, that was the part of the spinal cord injury, uh, in the, which, which, you know, the spinal cord injury causes paralysis. Um, the force of impact, um, Luckily, uh, as I was, after I hit my butt, I started to lean back and to catch myself. Um, so the force of impact, instead of shooting out of my skull and my brain, um, which would have split my brain um, or damaged my brain and potentially killed me or given me some type of brain damage, uh, is, is not, um, it didn't happen. And lucky me. You know, I say I've got the, 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 the best of the worst situation. Uh, paralysis is pretty terrible, falling 50 feet is pretty terrible, having all these broken bones is pretty terrible, but uh, I had no brain injuries, I had no internal injuries, and like luckily, you know, I have an incomplete injury as well, um, which I'll explain a, a little bit further. Another thing that happened was this, this left elbow got completely destroyed. I mean, it was turned to powder, like literal powder. Again, I saw the x-ray, it's insane. Um, and they put it back together with metal. Um, that, that fracture was pretty significant, so significant that they brought in um, a team from the local university uh, to look at it uh, for a case study because uh, they had never seen a fracture that large on a living body before. They'd only been able to operate on cadavers. Um, so they decided to bring in <laughs> a whole team of students just to look at look at my elbow because they were just uh, amazed and they couldn't believe that I, I fell um, 50 feet and uh, didn't die. So at the time, you know, still blacked out, not really knowing what's going on. And uh, luckily some people had saw me fall, but they didn't know how far it was or the seriousness of <laughs> The injuries. Um, they just thought that I had like fallen in a hole and maybe like sprained my ankle or something. Like it wasn't a big deal. But when they looked over the hole, um, looked down, they, <laughs> they saw uh, me laying at the bottom, just kind of all sprawled out. Um, again, I was in and out of consciousness. I don't really remember much, but I remember him, uh, uh, the guy that found me, him and his his girlfriend, wife now I believe, uh, you know, came and grabbed my head and just just held it tight and just started talking to me like, hey man, just be okay, it's gonna be all right, like relax, like the ambulance is on the way, like it's gonna be okay. And I remember um, being like, yo, like let me see my feet. I remember asking like, let me see, let me see my feet. Cause I, I, I knew that they were numb, like completely numb. Like I knew that I was paralyzed. I'd never been paralyzed before. I never knew what paralysis felt like, but I just knew. And for all you people out there that have definitely has, you know, spinal cord injuries, or any kind of paralysis, like when it happens, you know, you're not an idiot. Like you know exactly, you're like, oh, I'm paralyzed now. Like there's no second guessing, just half your body just like vanishes, it just ghosts. It's very, very strange, it's very, very weird. It's almost something like you can't, you'll never be able to describe to anyone who's never experienced it, honestly. By the time I, uh, the, the paramedics came, I was still in and out of consciousness and you know, I, I tried, to, <laughs> I tried to keep sitting up to look at my feet. Like I, I knew I couldn't feel it, but I knew where they were. They were like flopped out to the side um, as if there was no muscle connection. Like obviously there's no muscle connection, I'm paralyzed. And you know, um, 
you know, the paramedics came and they're like, hey bud, how you doing? What happened? You know, what, what did you fall? What's your phone number? I couldn't even remember my anybody's phone number. I couldn't remember my sister's phone number. And finally, I remember my mom's. Um, and at the time, the paramedics, you know, were, you know, cutting off my clothes and talking to me. And I hear one of the paramedics ask the other paramedics, hey man, um, what do you want me to do about his shoes? And he's like, oh, well, we'll just cut them off. And he's like, well, no, I mean, that's like the only thing holding his feet on. Like, just leave them there. And I remember hearing that and being like, oh, I'm fucked. Like, wow. Like, my feet are literally being held on by my own shoes right now. And, you know, I've just fallen in this hole and I have no idea what's going on. Like, this is crazy. And I remember that's when the pain started to set in. I don't know if like the paramedics, you know, gave me an injection of something or or because they started moving me, I don't know, but then it was only then when it started to hurt. And it hurt so bad it took my breath away. I couldn't even breathe. Um I was pretty familiar with the city and I remember being in the back of the ambulance and when they were driving me, I knew exactly what what curve I was going on. And uh, if anyone uh, knows anything about Atlanta, or if you live in Atlanta, it's the 7585, that big bend right there in the middle of downtown that causes all the traffic that no one in their right mind should have designed, but they designed it anyway. Um, right next to Centennial Park, you know, you know the place. And I remember thinking like, okay, what's next? But again, just in and out of consciousness, answering all their questions, really having no idea what was going on. And um, by the time I made it to the hospital, um, I was I was banged up pretty bad. I think I remember my sister coming and talking to me. Um, I was I was desperately begging for water because I was so thirsty because I just I was out for a run. Obviously, I wanted some water, but they knew that they were going to give surgery to me soon, so she couldn't give me any water. I remember begging, being like, "Give me a give me a paper towel, like that's wet. I mean, anything, anything, anything at all." And, um, you know, she, I remember she like blotted my lips and I was like, yes, the, mm, mm, the nectar of the gods. Yes. Ah, uh, give me more. Um, and you know, I, again, I think I was in ICU at the time. I really don't remember, but I kept coming out in and out of consciousness just all the time. And, uh, luckily, uh, cause I was, I was so strong and, um, uh, and I don't mean just physically strong. Like I had a strong heart. I had strong lungs. Like I was very strong. I was a, I was a strong person. Um, that they were able to keep me under anesthesia um, for like a week or two. I, I don't even remember, to be honest. I, I, I have never mentally tried to play that tape back in my head or try to ask questions or figure out the date. But um, I'm pretty sure I had like a lot of surgeries, like double digit surgeries in a, in a matter of a couple of days. I know they did three on each of my legs. I know they did um, one on my spine. They did a couple on my elbow. Um, I remember they put in like a filter um, somewhere in my body. So if I had any blood clots or whatever, but um, you know, by the, by the time, you know, this was all happening, they just kept me under anesthesia. So they would just like put me under anesthesia, do the surgery, move me back to recovery. And they wouldn't ever like wake me up. They would keep me under, they would keep me dosed up because they, I mean, my vitals were strong. It didn't, it didn't matter. Like I was good to go. And they kept just giving me surgery after surgery, after surgery, after surgery. But occasionally I would come to, I would come to consciousness. I would, I would, I would kind of wake up and I, again, I'd be like, Wait, what's happening? Like, where am I? What's going on? What's happening? And I remember my sister telling me like, Hey, you've been, you've been in a fall. It was a really bad accident. You broke your back. Your legs don't work anymore. You know, we don't know what this is going to look like for you or for your future, but just hang tight. We love you. Everything's going to be okay. And uh, I, I remember that happening multiple times. Meaning like, I remember that it, I forgot. Like I remember whenever I'd wake up, I'd be like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And my sister would have to tell me like over and over and over what, what was happening. Um, after all the surgeries were done and I was in the recovery room a couple of weeks later, I remember always having conversations with doctors and physicians and, you know, I was pretty clever at the time. I was pretty smart. I was into anatomy and, you know, that probably had to do with like the bodybuilding training that I was into and, you know, just in general, I think I was, I was pretty clever. So I understood what they were saying to me, um, but I didn't want to really believe it. You know, I remember one of the doctors coming in and saying like, Hey, you know, you know, your legs don't work, you're paralyzed, you're paraplegic now, like you're probably gonna have to get a wheelchair to get around, you know, and you'll probably never walk again. And I remember being like, 
nah, that's not true. Like, you just don't know know who I am. Like, I'm young, I'm strong, I'm fit. Like, I've got I've gotten over injuries before. Like, this is just gonna take a little bit longer. Like, ah, it's okay. Like, no big deal. Like, I'm not I'm not worried about it. Like, it is what it is. Like, these doctors, they don't know shit. I'm just gonna keep, you know, I'm just gonna keep hitting this morphine button and, you know, just making sure everything's okay. And funny memory this is totally off off topic off the side but i remember i was wanting to watch it's always sunny in philadelphia so bad it came on on like thursdays i think and at the time it was off the air and archer was coming on and i was so pissed because that's the only thing i was looking forward to i literally wanted to die i was just paralyzed like i was laid up in this hospital bed i just had fucking i don't know 15 surgeries and all i wanted to do was watch it's always sunny in philadelphia and I couldn't watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and that pissed me off. I remember the first time I was actually faced with the reality that I was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. It was when some other dude in a wheelchair rolled into my room to talk to me. And I didn't want to talk to him. I wanted nothing to do with him. I think deep down it's probably because I knew. I knew they had sent him because he was he was like me or I was going to be like him, but I didn't want that. And I remember I got so angry and so pissed and I started shouting and I started yelling and I was like, get out of here, man. Get out of this room. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, no. Like, I remember being just fucking argh, just so mad because I was like, fuck this and fuck that guy and I'm not going to be like him and there's no way I'm going to be in a wheelchair and like I'm not that big of a deal. It's not a big of a problem like ugh, just remember me so just mm, just viscerally angry and upset and pissed and like yo like I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe that I was going to turn into that guy because back then I thought that guy's life sucked. I thought he had a bad life. I thought you know, being paralyzed was awful. And honestly, it is. But I'm going to get to all the goods in a minute. Before I got injured, man, I was I was going to SCAD Atlanta for a sculpture degree. You know, I was bodybuilding like six days a week. I was running seven days a week. I was going on hikes. I was picking up sports at the park. Man, I was just so physically active. I mean, that's all I wanted to do was just like work out and exercise and train and play. And like I used my body for everything. I used my body for, for my school, for my career. You know, I was 20, dude. Like I'm trying to like pick up chicks and like drive and you know, just like I didn't know anything. And that was like the early days, like before CrossFit even existed. But you know, we were, me and the person I was training with, we were like kind of doing CrossFit stuff together and like, I was working out three, four hours a day, man. I mean, that's why I went for a run. Like, the gym was closed. Cool, I'm going to go for a run. And, it, it, like, that was the last day I ever went on a run. I hope it's not the last day in my entire life. But so far, that's what it looks like right now. And I'm okay with that. You know, I've accepted that. Um, man, I remember just, like, God, just, just being in so much denial. I remember, like, even before I got hurt, Dude, I had so many problems, and I don't mean physical problems. Like, my body was fine. I think the only issue I had was, like, my kneecap hurt sometimes. Maybe my shin hurts because I was, like, running, you know, working valet and working at a restaurant at the same time. So I was, like, on my feet a lot. You know, maybe that's the only problem I had. Maybe, maybe I, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it was nothing, dude. I was 20. I was 20. And, you know, like... I remember thinking to myself, like, oh, God, I never want to be like one of those wheelchair people. Like, I had such a negative perspective, such a negative idea about disabled people and disabilities and wheelchair and wheelchair life. and Because the, the only thing I'd ever seen was, like, a dirty, stinky, smelly, like, old, like, gross, like, ew, get away from me, you're a freak, you're a weirdo, you're, you know, and that's just, like, some internalized ableism that I didn't even realize I had and now all that hate that I had for disabled people all of a sudden I had hate for myself and I didn't even realize it was me hating on me it was like this whole whole weird weird thing that I don't even know how I got into it but I remember just being in so much denial and I remember you know like I was so banged up dude like my my left arm was in a cast you know both my legs were in a cast I couldn't really do any PT and uh, before they sent me home from the first hospital and before I could go um, to the second hospital, I remember they, they, 
they like kept me in this like, no, that's not the right timeline. I always gotta get my timelines right. So when they transitioned me from the first hospital to the second hospital, was pretty rough um, cause they transferred me to like a wheelchair hospital. You know what I mean? Like it was a specialized hospital. It was for like paralyzed people in wheelchairs. And I was actually kind of, I was glad I was there cause I was actually finally getting like the care and attention. Like they taught me how to cath, they taught me how to do bowel program, they taught me how to do skin checks. Like that other place didn't teach me any of that shit. Seriously? You know, they finally got me on some nerve pain medication and like some other stuff, some antidepressants, you know, like things I needed. That other hospital wasn't doing shit, man. They were just like, here, just take all this heroin, I mean morphine, and you know, just like, here, just press this button every three to four minutes, it'll get you high. I mean, it was taking care of my pain, don't get it twisted, but I remember when I moved to the other hospital, they weren't having that. They're like, nah, dude, we don't take people that, that are all jacked up on all these, all these meds. And I hated that, that sucked because I was in a lot of pain. I'm still in a lot of pain. Pain's probably one of the biggest biggest issues that I deal with, honestly. Um, but I remember growing resentment towards my wheelchair. I remember hating my wheelchair. I remember being so pissed. I mean, at the time I was in this big old power chair. You know, I had my I had cast on the left side, both my legs were all, all sorts of banged up and, and I had to heal. Um, so I couldn't even get into PT, like the wheelchair hospital couldn't even, I couldn't even do the PT at the wheelchair hospital because I wasn't allowed to put weight on my legs. I wasn't even allowed to, you know, move my arm a certain way. Um, and I remember just going home and that was rough, dude. That was, that was hard. Cause like at that time, the only thing I had to look forward to was like physical therapy. But all I was doing was like just living, I was just waking up to go to sleep. I mean, my daily routines were rough. I mean... I don't even want to get into it, man. That that really isn't the whole point of this video. Maybe if I write a book one day, I'll talk about it then. But like, yo, that was that was hard. I remember I watched all all every season, every episode of Lost, which is like over 120 one-hour episodes. That's kind of like all I did. I'd wake up, I'd eat breakfast, I'd do my bowel program, get my caths, get my wounds taken care of, you know, lay on my belly, you know, watch watch the show. I mean. Dude, I remember also getting into so much, so many like fights with my sister, dude. She was just trying to help, man. That's all she was trying to do was help. She was, she was really like the only one that was around to help me. Like she even like quit her job so she could stay at home with me instead of putting me in a nursing home or something. Thank goodness that didn't happen because I know, I know a lot of you people are stuck in, in nursing homes right now and like that sucks, dude. That's hard. Um, I don't even know how to begin to, to talk about that, but I finally. You know, after a couple of months, you know, I finally was allowed to get, you know, the weight bearing, you know, back on my legs. I was finally able to get up on my legs. My elbow was healed up a little bit and I could finally start doing some PT. So already I'm like four months behind on PT. So already I'm struggling to do stuff. And I'm still figuring out my bowel program. I'm still pooping on myself all the time. I'm still peeing on myself all the time. You know, luckily I didn't have any, you know, skin issues and I was just managing myself, you know, just doing all the stuff that they recommend you do. But I went to a pretty like aggressive inpatient program and it was awesome. They were great to me. You know, they, they did a lot of, um, a lot of PT stuff with me, a lot of OT stuff with me, a lot of, um, you know, therapeutic recreation, like they did, like, it was phenomenal, phenomenal. But I remember only wanting to do stuff that involved me standing and walking and getting stronger. I didn't want to learn how to pop a wheelie. I didn't want to learn how to push a wheelchair. I didn't want to jump up curbs. Like, fuck that wheelchair, dude. I'm not going to be in that wheelchair in a little bit. Like, no thank you. Not interested. Go away. I don't want to be a part of this wheelchair life. I'm not like you guys. I'm different. Like, I'm going to be healed in no time. Like, just get away from me. And that that mindset, like, stayed for a while. Probably almost until the end. Probably like the last month or so I was in that program. And I remember they were asking me about, like, you know, what what my goals were or something. Maybe they asked me what my goals were before. I don't remember when they asked me for my goals, but I remember them asking me, you know, like, what are your goals? And I was like, walk again. And they're like, okay, other than that. And I was like, walk again. And they're like, okay, other than that. I'm like, not need my wheelchair. And they're like, other than that. I'm like, walk again. Like, I literally was just so, like, st stuck on it. I was stubborn. 
So I started making some more goals like, okay, I want to get back to school. I want to get back to work, you know, and I'm going to walk again, right? But I remember there was this one guy who had an injury very similar to mine that was um, a lower, lower, like, it's similar, like, but different, okay? You know, these are all different. They're all like fingerprints. They're all unique in their own individual special ways. And honestly, like, there's literally no such thing as two spinal cord injuries that are the same. But let me get to my point. I had seen him on the treadmills. I had seen him on the locomat. I had seen him on, you know, walk-in with braces. I had seen him with crutches. I had seen him on a walker. You know, like, I had seen the progress he had made in, like, that nine-month period. And then I saw the progress that I made in that nine-month period. And I remember looking at him and saying, like, that guy's done so much for so long and has pretty much got nowhere from what I see. Maybe a little bit, but like, eh, you know? And I was in a similar situation. Like my right leg worked, sorta. The right quad worked, let me put it that way. I remember the only time I found out that I was an incomplete spinal cord injury was when they were giving me a bed bath and I started laughing. I was ticklish. I was ticklish on this right quad and I'm still ticklish on this right quad, which is kind of funny. If you think about it, like I couldn't feel Temperature, I couldn't feel soft touch or hard touch. I couldn't move my muscles, but I could feel tickle. I could laugh. So there was some nerve connected somewhere. And so I had a good, strong right leg, so much that I didn't really need a brace. Um, I didn't have a glute. I kind of had a hamstring. I didn't have a calf, but I, I, didn't, I could do toe up. I could like walk without my foot like dragging on the ground, which was a good thing. On the left leg though, Man, that left leg was like a wet noodle. That, that left leg didn't do shit. That was just like a floppy clunk. Like, it didn't do anything. Like, I, I had to, to put this big, gigantic brace on that went all the way from my toe to my ankle to my knee to my hip. Man, that thing was huge. They call it a KFO. Knee, ankle, foot, orthotic. Um, orthosis or whatever. KFO. And it was huge. And I remember progressing to the point where without the treadmills or like the, the locomat or like any of the PT, like I remember progressing to the point where like, I'm pretty sure I could walk with a walker and a brace or two crutches and a brace. But I was slow, I was clunky, I was in pain, I couldn't carry shit. If I fell over, I couldn't get back up. I felt more disabled. I got even more weird looks from people and we know disabled life, everybody always looking at you weird. And, you know, always the center of attention even if you don't want to be. God, just, yeah, don't get me started on that. Just leave us alone. Just leave me alone. Leave everybody alone. And I'm fortunately a little, a little, a little too much of a realist sometimes. Like, I'm stubborn as a motherfucker, but I also can use, like, logic and reason to kind of like talk myself out of my stubbornness. And I remember, remember sitting with myself and being like, all right, so if I hate the way I'm walking, even though I kind of can, and I see that guy over there and the progress he's made, and it's shit, it's trash. Like it's not, man, I was trying to, I was trying to be back to bodybuilding. I was trying to be like running and jumping and skipping and hopping and flipping. And, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, doing CrossFit workouts and going for runs. And like, I saw where that guy was and I was like, nah, that's, can't really, can't really, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not there. So in a really weird twist of fate, even though I still resented the shit out of my wheelchair, I realized that if the options were walking or wheelchair, I would rather have the wheelchair based on the kind or the type of walking that I could do. I was still like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to take uh take take the wheelchair. And again, in a really weird mindset twist, I remember just just like that. I was like, fuck it. I don't want to walk anymore. I don't care. Like this this dumb like noodle leg I've got on this left side that's just flopping around, does nothing, gets in the way. You know, the right leg's good. I can stand with it. And I did stand with it. And I'll still stand with it. You know, I'll stand up to grab something off the counter. I mean, I still got to be holding on to stuff. It's not like I got perfect balance. You know, I'll, I'll stand up to load my, my wheelchair, you know, into my vehicle. 
at the time I had like a little pickup truck and I could just throw it in the back of the truck and you know like one leg hop you know into the driver's seat I mean I didn't get start driving until later 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 but you know it was uh I just kind of was like fuck it you know fuck it like I was not happy with the lack of of progress that I had at PT I was not happy with kind of like where where life was going I mean my only goal was like you know walk again walk again, walk again. Well, I kind of walked again and it was shit. It was crap. It was bad. It was worse than rolling around on wheels and rolling around on wheels, in my opinion, sucked so bad. But I kind of submitted to it and said, okay, all right, all right, fine, fine. So I remember getting my first custom wheelchair and honestly fell in love with that bad boy. Oh, <laughs> I was stoked. Because I was, I, I had previously been running around on this, this 50 pound you know, folding bastard. And, you know, I was trying to get back to school and trying to get back to work and I got my custom chair and, and then I like learned all like these wheelchair skills. And, you know, I remember I got involved at in, um, like some wheelchair sports. Like I, I played around with some basketball and some softball and like even went on a trip with some wheelchair users. And, you know, like things were doing pretty good, man. But I still remember thinking like, okay, I'm using a wheelchair, but I, I, still, ain't like, I still ain't like y'all. Like, I'm not like you. Like, I'm not, I'm not this creepy, freak, weirdo, loser. Like, I'm not like you. I'm different. Like, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to stay away from you. Like, you guys fucking suck. And that's, that mentality, honestly, I'm going to say, I'll say it right now, was like the worst mentality to ever have. Probably the reason for the next phase of life that I went through was, was due to the fact that I completely ostracized myself from the wheelchair community and the spinal cord injury community because I thought I was different. I thought I was better than them. I thought, I thought I knew better. I thought like, oh, I'm not like you. I'm different. And uh, that's just not true. Not true at all. I'm not as uniquely different as I think I am. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I think a lot of people feel different. I think a lot of people feel unique. And not in a good way necessarily. But uh, after a while, man, walking didn't matter. Didn't matter to me. That was not a goal of mine anymore. No more walking. School and work, that's all I cared about. And within a matter of probably like nine months, I was back to school. That was dope. Made it back to school, started hanging with my friends again, kept my major. I don't know how I managed that, but I did. And um, uh, eventually, you know, like got to do like some really cool projects that, you know, banged up my body pretty hard. But honestly, it was like worth it. It was super cool. The fact that I was still able to, you know, use all these these tools and all these equipment and, you know, manipulate all this metal and all from a seated position. I was like, shit. All right. I'm doing it, you know, like just let me get back to my old life. Right. Uh, which, uh, you know, thinking if I think about it, my old life wasn't that great, but that's the old life that I knew, the only life that I knew. Yeah, I was following my dreams, I was following my goals, my aspirations or whatever, but the truth was, man, I was I was partying way too much. And by partying, I just mean like, not, really, not even like partying, partying, but just like I was like, just hanging out with like the wrong kind of people, you know? I, I, was, I was working at a restaurant and working at a valet, and, um, you know, after you go off a, a, a work shift at the restaurant, you know, you end up you know, hanging out with those people after and, you know, when you're you're going to school, you kind of pick the people that you hang out with and the people that I picked weren't necessarily bad people, but, you know, we always trying to hang out with the cool kids, you know, and the cool kids are always the ones who are, who are partying and shit. So it, it wasn't it wasn't as awesome as I thought it was, I guess. It wasn't as awesome as I thought it was. I was trying to get it back and I pretty successfully got it back. You know, I ended up getting a job. You know, I was working uh, for this really great company at the time and, you know, getting promoted and, but I, I like, what was I doing with my life, you know? Like, what was I doing? I, I mean, I, I was uninsured when I got hurt. And so I had like, just fucking like a half a million dollars in debt, just like looming over my head. Um, and, you know, debt collectors just call, always hounding me and calling me and harassing me. And no matter how much I would tell them my situation, they would just keep calling and keep harassing. And God, that was, that was uh, a stress, a mental, a mental stress. That was, that was really hard to deal with, man. Just constantly getting harassed by collection. People was like, hey. and you know, I, um, 
I eventually went down this like really dark path of addiction. And that story alone could be its own video. Um, but it's not. It's actually a series of emails I've written called The Untold Story because I really didn't tell it to anybody. Um, but now I'm telling it to people. And if you want to read more about it, you can click the link in the description. Um, go, go to my website and uh, you know sign up to read it. It's insane. After I got clean off the drugs and I was in rehab, I remember it was too painful to sit. Like sitting hurt. So the drugs that I was on that I used for my pain, I couldn't use anymore because I'd abused them and I ended up in rehab. Then I'm in rehab and it's too painful to sit. It's been years since I've had the brace. I don't even know where it is. It's probably gone somewhere. Um, I still have crutches available. Or maybe my mom bought me some crutches. I think that's it. My mom probably bought me some crutches because I had her bring them to me. And whenever I had the opportunity to stand, I would. Even if I was just standing on my, my right leg and just hanging onto the crutches. Like, I'd sit on couches. I'd sit in other chairs. I'd lay on the floor. Like, I'd do anything I possibly could not to be in my wheelchair because the wheelchair hurt so bad. And what's crazy, man, is I used the drugs to be able to stay in my wheelchair, but then I eventually, like, laid in my bed and was just, like, getting high in my bed all day. Uh, you know, but I, I eventually, you know, needed them. I mean, I've always needed them. And I think that's a tricky thing with, with painkillers, man, with opiates, man. It's like, we need them and they work and they work well, but you always have to keep up in the dose and up in the dose and up in the dose and up in the dose. And before you know it, just like me, you're seeing three doctors, you know, to get, three different medications that you've maxed out to the highest dose possible so you're just getting like nine prescriptions a month and burning through all of them you know just high as a kite just jabba 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 just straight up drug addicts man my like doctors were drug dealers dude like straight drug dealers but they didn't even know it man i was like finessing the system you know i had like multiple insurances you know for multiple reasons and I'd go see the different pharmacies and like try to keep it all. I mean, you can't pull that shit off today, but like, man, I was, I was fucked up. My mental health was messed up. But yeah, if you want to know all about this, we read that untold story. Literally click the link, go sign up. Don't forget about it. It's a really, it's, it's compelling, man. I, this is a long enough video as is. I really don't know. I've probably been talking 30, 40 minutes right now, but you know, it's something crazy is after I stopped poisoning myself, with those drugs, this left leg, who used to be just wet as a noodle, started to wake up. Now, don't, I don't know what that means, maybe. Maybe I was, I was taking the drugs to calm the pain because the nerve pain was so intense. Because my legs were waking up and I just ignored it. I really don't know the, the whole thing. I don't know the situation. I really have, I got no, I got no fucking clue. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, okay? I don't understand it, but what I do know is that the pain was so intense that I couldn't sit still or sit down, that I had to be on my crutches as much as possible. And then I kept finding myself being able to do things with this leg that I never thought I could do before because I literally physically couldn't do it. There was no connection. There was literally no connection from my brain to my legs. And, you know, it's like, like I said, it was just like a wet noodle, just kind of just, just noodling around. And, and uh, it started to get some strength, you know, like this quad like started kicking. The hamstring started pulling, the glutes started twitching, the toes started wiggling. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? This is insane. And, you know, they probably had to do with the fact that I stopped doing drugs. Cleaned up my life. Um, you know, I found myself really really overweight too i was underweight because when i was using i wasn't eating because if you eat it ruins your high which is so you just don't eat you just starve yourself and and then there was also like when i got to rehab they're shoving food in your face bro i put on like 40 pounds in 90 days like they are shoving your face man they call it the dopamine diet like, look, it's like fatty, greasy, oily, carby, like anything to eat to kick off that dopamine in your head because you're not getting it from the drugs anymore. It's that dopamine diet, man. And boy, did I blow up. But at least I was eating because before I wasn't eating. So, all right. So I'm like super overweight. 
and at the time, man, I was I was going to like NA meetings and you know listening to podcasts and reading books and you know I had a sponsor and I was working the steps and I'm all about this like personal development journey that I'm on. And uh, I remember reading in this book from this guy named Steve, who was talking about going vegan and like all the benefits of veganism, you know, not just morally or ethically or environmentally or whatever. He was just talking about, well, I can, I can focus for longer. I can read for longer. I got more energy. I can do this. I can do that. And I was like, oh, cool. That sounds tight. Like, I'll try it out. <laughs> and at the time, I was thick as hell, boy. I was, I was chunky, and I was eating out three, four times a day. I was going through drive throughs and I was hitting up Taco Mac, and I was getting pizzas, and, dude, I was just, I mean, sandwiches with a half a bottle of mayo on it. You know what I'm talking about, dude. I was, I was beefy. And I, I didn't want that anymore, so as a hack, I decided to go vegan. And when I went vegan, I had to eat in all the time. I couldn't go out to eat anymore. I got to get clever with my, with my diet. But most vegan diets are full of fat and carbs. It's not protein heavy. But So I, my, my weight didn't change, but my health improved, which is pretty cool. And then I started wanting to, you know, get back in the gym, man. I was just feeling it. I was like, you know what? Like, I need to lose this weight. You know, I was bodybuilding before, you know, I got hurt. And I tried to do it again, but I ended up like peeing and pooping on myself. And like this elbow was so jacked up, it didn't even move right. But after, you know, getting clean, I actually did end up having another surgery on this elbow for it to be able to move a little bit more properly. It doesn't fully function the way it used to still, but it, it functions, it moves, it does something. And, um, you know, I remember uh, just like, getting over the hump of like judgment like i thought like people were just gonna look at me and stare at me and make fun of me and i'm gonna i'm gonna do something and not be able to do it but the big thing i was always worried about was like peeing on myself dude i didn't want to go to the gym because i got pee on myself and i was gonna poop on myself too so what i'd do was my little hack i'd wake up either in the middle of the night or early in the morning before i had anything to eat or drink and I just work out on an empty stomach at like the butt crack of dawn before anyone got there. Like even earlier than like the early people. Like it was either late at night or early in the morning. I'm talking like three, four, five o'clock. Like it was late, like late. Um, and that was just cause I didn't want to be seen. And if I had an accident, I didn't want anyone to know about it. And you know, if I did something stupid or goofy or fell or whatever, I didn't want to be, I didn't want that extra attention. You know how it is like all this, all this extra attention for doing nothing. Like. Oh, you guy, you're so inspirational. It's like, yo, bitch, I'm eating a sandwich. Like, I ain't that inspirational. I'm, I'm literally eating a sandwich. I'm pumping my gas. I'm going grocery shopping. This ain't inspirational. That's that's the, that I didn't want. I've and people still do that to me to this day. They'll straight up come. They'll come walk at me. They'll be clapping. They'll be clapping while looking at me and be like, "Good job. Great to see you out." And I'm like, "Did you see me in?" I don't know what's happening. So, I remember uh, eventually, I, this might have been before the gym, honestly. This actually might, now that I think about it, this might have been a catalyst to get me into the gym, um, was that I, I, I had this surgery um, and I had an implant put in. It's called the AMS 100, and basically, it's an artificial urinary sphincter, and it's a way to keep me from peeing on myself. You know, I still cath, I still do the bowel program, I do everything, but I was just like, I was like, I didn't want to pee on myself. Um, so... That was either before or after gym. I literally can't remember. But what I do remember is like, I was working out one day, and I was like bench, bench pressing. I was bench press, pressing really heavy, and out of freaking nowhere, my left leg just like kicked out and like planted itself to kind of like be like, boom, like I got you. You're not tipping over. That blew me away because I didn't tell my leg to do that. It just did it. It just like reached out and like stomped and like made sure I didn't like tip over. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, whoa, I guess this left leg is, like, legit. And, you know, I tried, you know, to do anything I could to, like, get some strength back in it. You know, I, I remember, like, I, I got on a bike. I started, like, pedaling on a bike. And I was like, oh, shit, I can ride a stationary bike. And I'd use my strong leg to get get the momentum going. And then my little, little, little baby leg, I would just get to follow along. Well, I did that for a while while working at the gym. 
I was like, yo, I also want to get, um, you know, with a, with a specialist, you know, and try to like, see how far I can take this man like I'm determined to walk again like I'm gonna go to like neuro recovery rehab I'm gonna spend all this money you know I'm gonna get on the treadmills and do the locomat like thing like I never did before you know and I'm gonna eat right and I'm gonna train and dude I did this shit for like like two years probably this was before I was on any social media man I was a ghost no one knew about me except for me Remember, I was I was so full of guilt and so full of shame. I didn't want anyone to know about my disability. Man, I still kind of hated dis disabled people. I didn't want anyone to know about my addiction story. I wanted to keep that shit on the low key. And, um, you know, like, I just I just became obsessed. I mean, I, I got, like, a coach to, like, help me tra track my macro macros and, like, I started food prepping and I'd wake up in the morning every day and I'd do a leg day in the morning and then I'd go to, go to work and then after work I'd come back and I'd do, I'd do like an upper body day and you know I was training like a bodybuilder and then I started using like, like, like testosterone and like a bunch of other steroids and you know like growth hormone and I was like anything to get strength back in my legs man and I was just determined crazy. I mean I, like I said I was doing a leg day every day and there was always these cool advancements like I'd be able to crawl again you know like I remember the first time I stood up without like having to like reach onto anything or grab onto anything I remember just like laying being on all fours like rocking back on my toes and then rocking back on my heels and just standing up and I was like yeah and like fucking screaming and yelling and like that shit was amazing I remember the very first day I spent the whole day without my wheelchair that day was crazy I remember I took a picture of my wheelchair and I was like Aha, I literally went the whole day without your ass. I was determined, man. I wanted to hike mountains. You know, I wanted to run marathons. I wanted to I wanted to go bike riding. I just I wanted to do everything I possibly could. You know, cuz like I went from my wheelchair and now I'm walking, you know, from wheels to walking. And uh I just couldn't I just couldn't believe it. It was crazy. I remember I was so stoked on it. I even changed my Instagram name. I was gonna call it From Wheels to Walking, but I just decided Wheels to Walking was cool enough. No need to put a from in between it. And uh, I just, like, I remember at the time I was like still doing like, I was shredded, dude. I was shredded, I was like 160 pounds. Like I had abs on top of abs, on top of abs, on top of abs. You know, I was walking around unassisted. I had no need for a crutch. Um, either of my crutches, no leg brace. Um, I was hyperextending my knee pretty bad, and if you guys have been paying attention to the videos recently, you know all about, you know, why my, why, why that's, you know, going on. And, uh, it was right around that time, I, I was, I was pretty much, you know, like, I was cool with, with walking around, you know, but, but it wasn't practical. Like, in the same reason why I chose the wheelchair in the first place was the same reason why I still choose the wheelchair today. No matter how much progress I get, it always ends up being slow, inconvenient, painful, clunky, and I'm just so much better in this wheelchair. Like I can do so much more in this wheelchair. Like this wheelchair is like the key to my freedom and liberation. Like this wheelchair is the only reason I am who I am today and the only reason I'm doing videos like this for you guys and this whole channel exists and like, you know, all this shit is because of this wheelchair. I will probably always have a wheelchair. I, I literally can't imagine a life where I won't have one, um, which might, throw some of you off because you guys have been seeing some of my recent videos where I'm talking about this thing called a sea brace and how it might replace my wheelchair. And do I mean actually replace it 100%? Nah, fam, I don't think that's possible. But who knows? We'll see what the future holds and we're gonna get to that in a minute. So right around that time, I was like, I would started wheels to walking, man. And wheels to walking, you know, is what it is. I make videos for new wheelchair users to help them improve their quality of life and regain independence. And I share my experience, strength, and hope um, in the form of writings, which I've mentioned before, um, Instagram photos and captions. I make YouTube videos. You know, everything is all wheelchair-based. Um, everything from relationship advice to wheelchair basics to adaptive adventures. 
um, fitness and mindset videos, you know, I've talked a lot about my walking and recovery journey, you know, I got a podcast that you guys can listen to. If you guys have made it this far in this video and uh, you've just been listening to me talk to you the whole time and you like listening to me talk and hang out, yo, go check out the podcast. The podcast is where it's at. Me and Andrew spend 90 minutes every week just chatting about um, everything. It's not always wheelchair specific, but we always say a podcast with a guy in a wheelchair and a guy not in a wheelchair because that's exactly what this is. Um, so I just started, decided to, to spread, you know, all my knowledge, man. All, all my all my experience, strength, and hope on my videos, and it worked out successfully. So successfully, we even won a Shorty Award. You guys voted us in to the Shorty Awards. We have a freaking Shorty Award. We don't even have 100,000 subscribers. We don't have a silver play button yet, but we have a Shorty Award, and that is thanks to you guys. You guys literally have decided and annoyed... <laughs> The Real Time Academy so much, but um, it's great, man. And a shorty is is the equivalent of like an Oscar or a Grammy in the world of social media. Then the fucking craziest thing happened ever. Why is my life like this? K K. Hey, life. Can I catch a break, please? Can can bad things stop happening to me? I'm just trying to help people. Fucking hell. Okay? So, it's like December 22nd. Coming back from my sister's house with my girlfriend. Enjoying our family evening together. And it's raining like a motherfucker. It's like a tsunami. Like, like so much so that the drains stop working and there's now puddles in the road. So we're on a highway. Going like 65. And the car in front of us hits this puddle hydroplanes turns 90 degrees and goes straight into a fucking wall just blasts it and i see this happen right in front of my face and instinctually i'm like oh i gotta help this person like that's just in my blood i don't know why it's there it's just there when i see someone in pain or peril or danger like i just like i am compelled to help and that was like a really bad accident too. Like they, I didn't know if they would even be breathing, to be honest. Like I didn't know if I was gonna have to do CPR, if I'm gonna have to pull them out of the car. You know, I didn't know what was gonna happen with 911. I literally have no idea. You know, ambulance take 20, 30 minutes sometime, especially in the rain. I was like, fuck, like I gotta like go make sure this person's okay. So I pull over, I get on my crutch, I'm gimping my way over there. And uh, I have to like rip the door open. Like I, it's, it does if the hinge is broken, like that's how far it got smashed. It's like, so I rip open this door and you know, this, the, the beep, 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 the door's going off, you know, the wipers are still going, the airbags are deployed, it smells like gunpowder, you know, cause for those of you that don't know, airbags are black powder, like boom, like that's how they blow up. Uh, and I tell the girl, I'm like, hey, you need to get out of your car now. Like it's like, this is, this is dangerous. Like you need to get out of your car. You're like, you, she was breathing. I was like, can you talk to me? Is everything okay? Like get your phone. She's, and I was like, you need to come with me. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, you need to come with me now. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, fuck it. So I like go to leave and then black out. So my girlfriend tells me that who's been in the car in front of this crash, looking out the back, watching exactly what happens that another car, it's that same puddle, hydroplanes the exact same way and crashes into the first car, which in turn puts me into a concrete wall. Welcome to my life. So I wake up and I'm on the ground, it's freezing. I'm like in a puddle, I'm literally in a puddle. Jalila's crying over top of me asking everything okay. And I'm like, my legs, Fucked, dude. My leg is fucked. Like, I knew it was fucked. But luckily, I was conscious. Um, luckily, the first car was there to block me from the second car because that would have been death for sure. Um, but my uh, left leg this time, which was the, the leg, if you remember, that actually started to wake up and work, um, was snapped in half. The, the same bone that was broken um, from the original fall the tibia, but just a little bit further up, kind of in the middle, top three quarters area. And it was snapped and it was like through the skin. It was like, you could see it. 
it was kind of kind of whack Ugh. so anyway get ambulanced to the hospital I'm laying there in the bed like what is my life right now but I've been through enough shit before to know that like if you just hang on if you just keep waiting like everything's temporary like it's gonna be okay you know everything everything like literally if you just wait long enough everything's gonna be fine there's a little pro tip for you if you're going through some shit just wait just know that it's temporary just know that it's gonna be okay give it time be patient and before you know it you're gonna go what problem because it won't be a problem anymore so I'm laying there and my leg hurts obviously they did a surgery on it they put like this big huge nail through it um, and 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 basically I'm back to square one my walking progress all my walking progress gone nothing gone zip zero nada I am 100% back in my wheelchair um, unable to do anything again this like reminds me very much of like the first thing I went through not as extreme honestly this one was a little bit easier because experience um, but I remember just being like okay I'll just wait it out and everything was good for about the first month um, and then I ended up having this really myst big mystery fever that you know ended up um, was the result of some blood clots and I'll, I'll put a playlist up here um, that you should check out if you're really interested in the whole hit by a car timeline story scenario situation uh, but that was that was um, like 10 months ago like last year well almost last year it's December you know what I'm talking about so you know catching up on 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 all that stuff I'm I've been able to get a lot back and I still feel weak though. I still feel like there's a lot of progress to go. I still have a lot of pain and I'm still like, it sucks, it sucks. I wanna, I wanna get back to where I was and honestly maybe further. But I didn't, I didn't really know. Like I, I was like, okay, like I'm trying to walk again, again. My, sh my channel is called Wheels to Walking. The story from wheels to walking, my journey from wheels to walking, and how I was able to accomplish from my wheels to walking journey before, but I just wasn't recording it. Now I'm able to record it, so things are kind of changing around here. Things are shifting. I'm I'm doing a lot of, um, you know, fitness and mindset stuff. You know, I'm not. I mean, obviously, you know, some of the videos are are are, are more. They're they're not so wheelchair based, and that's not a problem. Um, but I, I'm, I am rejuvenated again. I'm re-thrilled. I am re-excited. And one of the things I'm the most excited about is this thing I discovered called the C-brace. So the C-brace is basically like that first brace that I described earlier that I thought was really crap and clunky and like required two crutches to use. But this brace has a computer. It's way more complicated than that. Okay way more complicated than that at the knee joint and which will allow me to do all of the things that I have been having challenges and struggles with so the left knee that hyperextends will hopefully that will be resolved any kind of um, stairs up or down uh, inclines up or down and hopefully pain management too. Like another big reason I don't walk around a lot is pain and even more so now. Even more so now because I, I don't, pain blows dudes. It's the worst ever. Nerve pain, back pain, hip pain, joint pain, this pain, that pain, left pain, right pain, 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 fucking pain. Pain is what got me addicted to drugs, man. Pain, pain has made my life a living nightmare, a living hell. Pain is literally like, out of all the issues I deal with, and I deal with a lot, I got mental health issues, I got addiction issues, dude. I've got fucking skin issues, I got bowel, I got bladder. Dude, the, the pain. Mm. Mm. But I'm stoked. I'm excited to see what happens. Last week's video, I kind of described all about, you know, the things that it could help me with. The week before that, 
you know, I even went and got examined and maybe next week's video. I don't know if it's next week's video or the week's video after that, to be honest. I don't know how the whole schedule is going, but I do have an appointment to go do the actual trial. I know I've been clickbaiting you guys a little bit into into seeing what I've I've been doing, but like the actual proper trial where they're going to get one that's not custom fit to me, but will fit on me and just sort of see if it even works at all. But I'm stoked, dude. I'm rejuvenated, I'm re-energized, and I'm excited. And, you know, if I do get the sea brace, uh, one, I don't even know how the hell I'm going to afford it. First of all, it's a bajillion dollars. My insurance doesn't cover it. I don't know how the hell that's going to happen. But let's say I magically get it. There is a very rigorous physical therapy regime or regimen. I don't know how you say that. Physical therapy regimen attached to it that will that is required in order to to make sure the rest of you doesn't screw up you know that your low back that your hips that your knees that your ankles that all all that stuff doesn't get you know all sorts of fucked and i'm excited about that because i want i i, I want something to work towards you know, before I wanted to walk again and I succeeded. Then I started doing more bodybuilding stuff again and got like all jacked and shredded the way I wanted to. You know, I got hit by the car. I'm being healed. I got back in the gym. You know, I'm doing a bunch of different exercises that, you know, I, I want to start. I want to be able to do, you know, leg days in the morning and, you know, bodybuilding at night or even just regular, just keep doing leg days all the time. I don't know, man. I just want to. I just want to experience some more independence and some more freedom and I just want to be away from pain and yo if I think this and I think the sea brace has the potential man it really has the potential to really like improve my quality of life you know the same way that this wheelchair has man I just see it as another tool like this wheelchair is the key to my independence and freedom and that sea brace looks like it has the ability to kind of parallel that as well I mean, my right leg still needs a lot of work, and honestly, that could be a factor that prevents me from wanting to use it or even wanting to buy it. It also might not be as awesome as I think it is, and maybe I'll just figure out another brace situation for, you know, um, the right leg, you know, the whole toe, and then I'll, I'll start riding bikes or something. I don't know. I'll set myself up for some kind of goal some kind of success, some kind of thing, because I really need something to work for. really need something to do. And uh, I want to bring you guys along for the journey. And, you know, uh, for those of you that have made it through this ridiculously long video, appreciate you. Thank you. Um, I knew that this video um, was probably not going to reach a lot of people, uh, but I was hoping it would reach the right people. And uh, I hope you're the right person. And I hope you've seen this. And um, I'm glad that <laughs> you're here. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, it means the world to me. Um, if you like this video, please leave a like and comment down below. Um, let me know what you're working towards in your life or maybe what you want to work towards. Um, I've kind of given you uh, a bit of my life story from original injury all the way until now. Uh, and I know you might not think this is brief, but this is very brief. If I ever decide to write a book one day, it's going to be like this fucking thick and I'm only 31. So, what's that about? <laughs> uh, but you know, things are changing. Things are always changing. Things are moving. Things are happening. There's progress to be made. And I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, having a, hang having a little hangout with me. And, uh, you know, jump on that podcast too. That podcast is dope. That podcast is a whole lot of fun. And um, appreciate you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.